we started? I think we passed verse 8. Um, Ruth 1, I think we're starting at 15. Yes, about 15. So we left off where this woman, Ruth, took a journey with somebody that she had only known by marriage. And we left off with the... So we're doing Ruth 1, let's say 15 to 22. So we can finish the chapter today briefly by the grace of God, right? Praise God. Briefly by the grace of God, we'll finish the chapter today. Thank you, Lord. And so in this portion, we left off with the fact that faithfulness is a seed. Faithfulness is a seed. Someone say that to yourself. You're listening. Faithfulness is a seed. You can share it again. Share the video and write it there. Faithfulness is a seed. And I think the summary of our last section was this. If you were not here, listen carefully. I can't, I can't remember it verbatim, but I, I, I know what, it, what it's saying, right? The summary of our last section was this. The victory or the breakthrough of Ruth. The breakthrough of Ruth did not happen when she met Boaz. Or when she walked into Bethlehem with Boaz. It happened when she made up her mind to be faithful and walk out of Moab with Naomi. And there was so much that she gave up. There's so much that she turned her back from. There's so much that she, she walked into that was so new to her. Praise God. That was so new to her. But it had been impressed in her heart that this is a journey that she must take. It didn't say that Naomi pushed, and as a matter of fact, Naomi pushed her away and said, go back to your people. Go back to your mother. I don't have another son to give you to marry. And she insisted. And the most important thing about the commitment that Ruth made to Naomi was that she said, your God will be my God. She understood she understood that something about Naomi was different. And it was the God that Naomi had on her side. Now remember, at this time, Naomi was still hurt. Naomi was still upset. Naomi was still discouraged. As a matter of fact, she said that the hand of God had done her badly. The hand of God had 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 done something to her that she was not pleased with. She changed her name to Bitter. But yet still, yet still, Ruth saw something in her and said, I will follow you. And we spoke, we reminded ourselves as Naomi's, the older women among us, to be mindful not to push away our Ruth. There are some that God has placed in your life that see nothing in you except for what God sees in you. That want nothing from you except for to do God's will. But oftentimes because of pride, those of us that look or feel or, or, or are older or say that you're more experienced, oftentimes push away your blessing because they look younger. They sound younger. They've not lived long enough. They don't know this. They don't. They, you think they don't know this. And, and you judge by what you hear, what you think you know. And so we are to be mindful. We are to be mindful of that. And then we thank God and prayed, Lord, make me that woman that doesn't look, not even at the content of character, that doesn't look at anything, but is led simply because you say go. This woman did not even think, I have not had one child yet. I don't have another way to get a husband to have another child at this time. She didn't think ahead. Perhaps Naomi will introduce me to somebody in Bethlehem. She never thought about those things. She simply said, I've given my life to you and your God. I'm clinging on and I'm following you. And that faithfulness, as we know later on, it paid off. It paid off. Praise God. It paid off. Thank you, Jesus. It paid off. So let's keep going. <clears throat> Verse 16, Ruth had the conversation where we're in, we're in Ruth chapter 1. 
again saying where you go i go where you lodge i lodge your people will be my people your god will be my god where you die i die where you are buried i will be buried the lord do so to me and more if ought not death separate us separate us good morning from hill station that's my neighborhood god bless you ma'am thank you jesus and verse 18 says, when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, she stopped speaking to her. So Naomi saw that this woman was determined. She was determined. She was determined. Praise God. She was determined. And so she said, okay, no problem. You can come with me. And so they went, verse 19. And so they went. They came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass that when they were come to Bethlehem, they that all the city was moved about them. And they said, is this Naomi? Is this Naomi? Is this Naomi? Astonished. Because remember, she had left. She left when things were hard. And the rest of them stayed. And they that stayed, they that stayed, Received the visitation. Remember verse 6 says, He visited his children and gave them... You listen, scriptures that we're supposed to know, I'm not even going to finish the sentence anymore because we've sang the song enough that we know it, right? Praise God. And we saw a real life testimony about that verse 6. And so they stayed and this blessing happened to them. The famine disappeared. And Naomi that had left came back. And they saw her... Listen. Hmm. Oh God, help us. They saw her come back empty. And she said to them, you know, they saw her come back. We don't know whether they were happy, but the Bible says they were moved. They were shocked like, oh yeah. I, I thought maybe the place you went to was better than us that you left behind. Why are you back? Can you imagine the different types of gossips that could have been going on? The different types of talk. I, I almost want to say it in another language, but I, I'm not going to right now. Because, you know, I just need to just keep it flow going. But can you imagine the different pockets of conversations? Look at her, she's back. I thought she said that it was better over there in Moab. Oh, 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 where's the husband? Who's that she brought with her? Different corners of chatter would be happening about her because they were like wow she really did return and verse 20 and she said unto them she said unto them call me not naomi her name naomi meant pleasant don't call me that anymore this was still the hurt woman this was still the the widow this was still the now motherless woman so heavy with hurt the only thing she probably had to be happy about was Ruth that was next to her. But she didn't even know why Ruth was following her. Ruth didn't even know where she was going. So it was like almost like the blind leading the blind. And she said to them, don't call me pleasant anymore. Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara, which means bitter, right? For the Lord had dealt bitterly with me. She summarized her. 10 plus years in Moab as a bitter dealing of the Lord upon her. Now, whatever we equate that to be, one thing is clear. That despite all the loss, despite all the leaning on her own understanding or on her husband's understanding and going where God did not send them, despite all of those, the Lord still had mercy upon this family. The Lord still had mercy upon this woman. And it was his mercy that caused her to hear that bread had arrived again in Jerusalem, in Bethlehem. It was mercy that caused her to want to turn back and go back home. And it was mercy that clung Ruth to her, even though she didn't know it yet. Oftentimes there are things that God will do signifying his mercy to us. And because we don't know it, we reject it. Somebody lift up your voice and pray for yourself. Father, may I not miss your mercy. May I not misunderstand your mercy. May I not take your, what you are doing as your mercy for granted in my life. She missed it. She missed it. She missed it. 
She said, God has dealt bitterly with me. I went out full and the Lord brought me home empty. But aren't you glad? It's better to be brought back empty than to be brought back in a, in, in a bag, God forbid. For as many as have gone into this place called Moab. We have been, thank you, sis, for, for, for using the prodigal word again because we've been going back and forth to the prodigal son. If you've been here since the beginning of this message, you know that. It's better to be brought back in your nothingness than to come back dead or not to come back at all. It is the season to return to God. That is why he has made it possible for everybody to stay home. Get in your on his face. Get on your face, in his face, on your closet, on your knees and say, Lord, I'm coming back to you. And the last time we touched on this on Friday, remember, we said concerning Naomi, that what matters is the returning, not the packaging at time of return. What matters is the returning. I thank God for the mercy that pulled on this woman to come back. Many of us would have been like, I'm not going back there. Elimelech is not here. My sons are not here. I want to wait so I can look good before I go back because I need to show them. I need to show them. And God is saying to us in this season, morning crew, stop worrying about who you're showing or what you have to show. I am here to take you as you are. Whether it was your mess up or somebody else's mess up that led you to where you are, you don't have to show anybody anything. Come as you are. And I am the one that restores. I'm the one that fixes. I'm the one that puts broken things together. I'm the one that makes use even of fragments that, have not, that are nothing. Come back as you are. She came back bitter, broken. She changed her name. Come back as you are. Where you find yourself now. You feel like you, have been, you, are, you were led there and it wasn't of God. Please, can you just say this? to yourself right now i am turning back to god the prodigal son imagine what would have happened if he waited to get all his wealth back before he returned to his father because he wanted to show his brother pride and returning to god they are not they're oxymorons those two things don't go together praise god so stop wondering about who will say what, what will think what, who will do what. Go back. In humility to your father, go back. Thank you, Jesus. And she said, I went full, but the Lord had brought me back home empty again. And when, why then do you call me Naomi, seeing that the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty had afflicted me? She had no idea. She had no idea. That it was the love of God that had returned her. It was the love of God that had returned her. She had no idea. So Naomi returned. And Ruth, the Moabites, her daughter-in-law, was with her. Which returned out of the country of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of the barley harvest. Things had turned around. Things had turned around. Things had turned around. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I had a note here for the barley harvest. Let me pull it back up. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It was harvest time. It was harvest time. And this was the time that they had returned. I pray for someone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That by the mercy of God, you are hearing the word of God. You're not hearing, Alfina. You're hearing the word of God. Though the world may be in this season that it is in, for those of us that can say, Lord, I'm coming back to you. It's harvest time. Naomi, all she heard was that bread had come again to the land. But the moment she entered was the moment of harvest. In where, what is harvest? Harvest is getting harvest is a reaping right harvest is getting the goods of what had been sown harvest time who sowed what naomi was about to pluck not naomi not her husband remember they were not there during seed time oh God, thank you ah thank you god they were not there during seed time ruth was not even she wasn't even one of them she's a more by test 
but obedience and faithfulness brought her on the scene right when it was harvest time. <laughs> right when it was, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right when it was harvest time. Right when you are, it was harvest time. It's like staying in houses you did not build. Right when it was harvest time. I don't know who has been delaying to return to God. I don't know who has been delaying to take this issue and give it back to God. I don't know why you have been delaying and saying, I, I can handle it. I, do. I, heard God, I heard somebody say, oh, I was vexed in my spirit. I heard somebody say, a well-known person say on their Facebook Live, they were talking and somebody said a prayer for Corona. And the person said, let's leave God out of this. Can you imagine? I just shook my head. I said, my goodness. That's somebody who's going to miss harvest time. Harvest time is waiting for the ones that will be obedient and will turn back to him. Harvest time is the one is available for the one that will, that will not look around to see, do I look the part? You don't need to look the part to harvest what God has waiting for you. Kapatos. Oh God, I never cared about looking the part. You don't need to look the part. You don't need to sound the part. You don't need to have the package right before it is time for you to take what God had for you. All Naomi and Ruth did was walked into it. Somebody else sold. There were people that had to live through that season of famine. They ran away, remember? They ran away. Ruth and her husband, Naomi and her husband ran away. God is faithful. God is faithful. Let me read this to you. The barley harvest starts just at the start of Passover. Hey, Holy Spirit, what season is it? Come on, believers, answer the question. What season is it? What was yesterday? We're beginning to understand why the Holy Spirit brought us to this chapter. Why the Holy Spirit brought us to this chapter. And Funnily, and another another thing clicked in my head this morning before before I came on. I didn't get a chance to read it, but I looked at the I looked at the index of my personal devotional that I follow. And the Bible in a year reading for today is Ruth chapter one to chapter four. We are in that Passover season. We are in that barley harvest season. Someone, do you get it now? You get it. Miss Brenda, I know you get it. I know many of us get it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So we are learning something. This is our season. If only we can be obedient. If only we can be faithful to God. This is our time. To reap, even where you did not sow. To reap, to walk into a harvest. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And it is the last week of Lent, absolutely. If the barley harvest commences at the start of the Passover in Israel. Ruth left Moab, her country of birth, alongside her mother-in-law, Naomi. They both returned to Bethlehem. On the event that God had visited Bethlehem with good tidings after the famine that lasted 10 years. Ruth refused to stay back at her homeland despite persecution, persuasions from Naomi. Naomi insisted Ruth stay back as Malon had died and she didn't have chance of providing her another husband. Ruth turned down the offer to stay and she followed Naomi. The barley harvest means... That farm owners will require extra hand to help pick up the grains and the glean. Ruth took this opportunity because there was so much harvest. There was so much. Remember, we're not in chapter 2 yet. But there was so much harvest that the man that she finally met, help was needed. And favor was available. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Declare that over yourself. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Because I am favored, I will be at the right place at the right time. Help was needed. 
There was so much to be harvested that extra hands were needed. And the woman with favor appeared on the scene at the right time. Oh, may you not miss to be at the right place at the right time. May you not miss your divine positioning by the hand of God in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this note started talking about Boaz. I'm going to pause there because that will be for tomorrow as we return to the glory of God by the grace of God. Someone begin to lift up your voice and pray. Father, help me. To be faithful to you because that was the trick that was the that was the seed that was the that was the the formula that was needed for these two women for naomi it was just a reckless abandonment in returning i had nothing else to do in this place i heard the word of god and i followed i followed because it was time to go back home for ruth it was just blind faithfulness. Maybe some things her husband had told her about the God of Bethlehem. Maybe some characteristics that she had seen in Naomi. And the combination of the faithful and the obedient worked them together at the beginning of the barley harvest. I pray for you in this very season. We are in that season. In the, in the Hebrew calendar, in the, in the nation of Israel, we are in that season. We are in that season. How is it that the week in which our Savior endured the greatest of pain for you and for me is also a week that signifies a barley harvest in the same land? It means that an exchange was made. An exchange was made. A divine turnaround happened. Though it was to his loss and to his detriment, it was so much for our gain and our victory and our healing and our, and our peace. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for you this day in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have been praying for yourself and I agree with you and pray for you. That you will not miss your moment of divine obedience. And you will not miss your moment of divine faithfulness. To be faithful to God and to the things of God. To be quick to obey so that you won't have to sacrifice. And the Lord by his divine mercy. As you make up your mind. As we as I make up our minds. To be faithful to God. God. To be obedient to God. May he cause us to walk and to harvest. May he cause us to walk into the fullness of all he had prepared for us all along. I'm sure Ruth never dreamt of this. I'm sure Naomi never dreamt of this. She probably never thought that they would ever turn back to go back to where she went, where she came from. It was a turnaround that probably made her to be embarrassed or to be ashamed. You heard the things that she was saying about herself. You heard the things that she was even saying about God. But what she did not know was that all God needed was that one step. Was that one step of her returning. The prodigal son also did not know that that one step to return back to his father would change his life. He didn't know whether the father would be happy to receive him, whether he'd be laughed at for, for losing everything, whether he'll be mocked by his brother, whether the father would turn him away. But glory be to God. Mercy is always available. All he needs for us to do is to make up our mind to turn. To turn back. Is that your stance this morning? You are saying, Lord, I'm turning back. I'm coming back to you. I had the child. I, I, I took them all to myself. I didn't pray to you again after I delivered. I'm turning back to you with them like an Hannah. I'm bringing him or her back to you. I had the marriage. I had the beautiful wedding. I didn't care about you again after that day. Lord, I'm turning back to you. I'm bringing it back to you. To say thank you. And to say unless you keep it, I don't know how to keep it. Unless you guard me, I'm, at, I'm in danger. I'm at risk. Some of us just this week, just last week, just a month ago, you were healed. The things that many are complaining about, the things that we're praying for others about, you, you survived. You've survived them. You felt the symptoms, but nothing came out of it. Can you lift up your voice and say, Father, thank you. I bring again to you 
my very being, my veins, my organs, everything. I bring them back to you. Perhaps I didn't say thank you enough the last time. Here I am, returning to say thank you. Returning back to him. I remember the one leper. I remember the one leper that took the risk after nine others along with him had been healed. Remember what happened? Someone say, I am the one. We know that song around here. I am the one. Took the, took the step and said, no, no, no. Something is different. This, is, this wasn't just any kind of healing. And even if it was the same old healing, I tap into the place of gratitude. He says he wishes above all things that you prosper and be in good health. And the encounter with Jesus healed me from this leprosy. He said in his word for us that in everything we are to give thanks. It is the will of the Lord for us. And so the one leper. Listen. This kind of returning doesn't require you to go and drag this person and drag this person and drag this person. I tell people all the time. I come on here. I do my assignment. The Lord helps me. I, I release the word. For as many as I have personal contact with, I admonish, I teach, I try to live an example too. But how many of you know my own cross to carry is just as important, is just as valid? And so there are times where I intentionally go and say, Lord, thank you. Lord, I still need you. Lord, I still want you. Lord, I still have this on the list. Lord, I still need this. Lord, this is still happening. That one leper. I don't know whether he told his friend, come on, we have to go and say thank you. I don't know whether he cajoled someone to go and say thank you. But at the end of it all, it didn't matter. No, none of them followed. He came of his own will and volition to say, Lord Jesus, I noticed something. And though my result of healing was the same as everybody else's, I have come for me. To say thank you. And what happened? He walked into his own barley harvest. And what was his own barley harvest? His own barley harvest was the Lord Jesus said, You are made whole. Extra. Individualism, exactly. Extra. This this walk, this walk of gratitude, of faithfulness, of obedience. Thank God for the power of fellowship. But it's an individual walk. If you are waiting for someone to come with you to say thanks to God, my goodness, may you not miss your barley harvest entry. Put everybody else aside now and say, Lord, here I am. Thank God the breakthrough was for your entire family. The breakthrough was for your entire household. But that individual turnaround, that individual gratitude must be done. And so Ruth didn't know it, but she was turning around for herself. Naomi didn't know it, but she was turning around for herself. Together they were forced to reckon with, but individually God dealt with each of them, helped each of them one received mercy one received the surprise of her life but it all started when the mind was made up father we thank you for this amazing dissection of your word that was yeah a week and a half almost on just chapter one we'll keep going the lord will help us this time, something I've been wanting to do for a very long time, and now I have all the time in the world, is to actually package the teachings, you know, like in CD or, or what have you. Pray for me. The time is available. Pray for me. That all that is needed to make it a reality will be a reality. So this is one that we can actually dissect out and put together. And um, maybe even on YouTube, it'll be available for us to be encouraged and be reminded when we need it the most. So we have prayed and we glorify God. If you don't know Jesus at this time, I want to take the opportunity to introduce you to him and ask you to consider, give your life to Jesus. As believers, with this, with this decision that someone is about to make is the greatest turnaround that we can make is the greatest decision that we can make it will lead you into a harvest that you never thought of asked or thought of it or imagined 
I'm living proof of that. That when you turn to Jesus, he'll give you so much more. He'll give you so much more. Things that you didn't even know were there will become available to you. So won't you give your life to him today and accept him as your personal Lord and Savior? Just lift up your voice and begin to speak to him. Lord Jesus, I give my life to you now. I confess that I'm a sinner in need of your grace. I accept you now to be personal Lord, my personal Lord and Savior. Come into my life and change my story. Come into my life and change my story. Father, we give you praise in Jesus' name. If you have made that, that prayer, if you have said that prayer, congratulations. The Lord has entered into your life and your life can't be the same again listen family we're going to continue to pray at noon on our zoom and on our telephone line to the glory of god and we believe god for his for his move in every life thank god for the book of ruth thank god also for as many as are being healed and delivered from the beast that is facing the world we stand on this confession for this family i didn't have Wow, praise God. I just realized that the logo or the website was not on the entire time. But there, they are now on your screen. But we are praising God that among this family of God, none shall be missing. None shall be missing. None shall be missing. The siege is over and it is well with us. In Jesus' name, the Lord has healed us. The Lord has helped us. I want to thank God.